for funerals. That's the conversation we're having. What demands does your culture make for funerals? We're talking about that um, as a follow-up to a conversation I started months ago before I went on leave. You remember one community report, we talked about it for like 30 minutes and um, you had so much to say. And I made a promise that, you know what, we're going to come back and revisit it. But time has just not been right to do it. And uh, serendipitously, um people on social media started having a conversation about it all over again and they talked about how some of these demands were unnecessary some of these demands were outrightly ridiculous and they couldn't understand why at a time when you've suffered a terrible loss the loss of a wife the loss of a husband the loss of a father a mother an uncle that's the time that relatives who should be mourning with you are making long lists of demands of you why does that happen how does it even happen in your place does your place um have situations where um they're making some of these demands that make absolutely no sense so one of the most uh, famous comments on on this subject that uh, went viral on social media uh, said something that I want to read to you. And then you share with me what your thoughts on, on, on what she said. Where Her name is Udraya and she tweeted, Africans do awful things we call culture and tradition. Your loved one dies and instead of bringing you cooked food, money, labor, people bring their greedy behinds to sit down, expecting you in grief and devastation to cook and serve them food and alcohol. And they refuse to leave. And then she says that she's never seen or you will come to your house when somebody dies without bringing food. You may not want that casserole, but they'll never expect you to feed and entertain them when your world fell apart. Some will even leave the food and not enter to disturb your mourning. They'll organize food delivery, not food eating and wine drinking. They make schedules for who cooks which day so that all of them don't come at the same time. They'll prepare who comes to clean, who comes to sleep in your house to look after you. Everything is focused around comfort of the bereaved, not comfort of the guests. And you take a look at that culture there. And um, you compare it with our culture here. Now, I don't know how, what's obtainable in, in your culture, where you come from. But where I come from, it's not, it's not nice. And this is a conversation that we have to have because, like I said when I was introducing the show on The Big Three today, um, a lot of us are getting to the stage where we will start burying our loved ones. So our parents are old now. Our uncles are old, our aunties are old. So that means that it's our responsibility to bury them now. And when that time comes, do we want to continue to meet some of these demands that um, we admit are ridiculous? Or do we want to like band together and say, uh-uh, culture is supposed to evolve. Culture, culture is not supposed to be stagnant. We are the culture that um, uh, we want to see. So we're not going to condone this anymore. We're not going to endorse this anymore. We have to start seeing some changes. So I want us to talk about funerals. How does it happen in your place? Do they place ridiculous demands on you when you're about to bury somebody who dies? Why do we wait until someone is grieving, someone is mourning to start to demand that they buy us this and buy us that and pay for this and pay for that? If you refuse to do it, what happens? If you say, I'm not going to do all of this, I'm going to do what I'm able to do, what happens? If you ignore everybody and carry your dead and bury them, what happens? Because you have people who their loved ones will die in uh, foreign lands, like, you know, they die abroad in America, in Russia, in India, wherever they die. And you have families going into debt, trying to bring that dead body back to Nigeria instead of, say, just bury them wherever it is that they died. The earth is the earth, is the same earth. The earth in Enugu is not different from the earth in Kafanchan. It's not different from the earth in Antarctica. It's earth. It's the same mother earth. 
So why do we not look for different ways to make the process easy for the people who are mourning? Why do we continue to take and take and take at a time when we should be giving? Whether it's comfort or whether it's food or whether it's money or to people who have just lost a loved one. Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three oh seven hundred nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. How demanding are funerals where you come from? What are some of the demands they make on you where you come from? Are the demands where you come from reasonable or are they ridiculous? We're streaming live on Facebook, so share your thoughts with us if you cannot get through uh, via the phone lines. You can also share your thoughts via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. The number for women is 01465-7190. 01465-7190. For men, 0700-993-993-993. Tayo is in transit. Hello, Tayo. Welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tayo. Okay. Um, I want to contribute to the discussion. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes, actually, I believe that um, the issue of people overspending during funeral or if a cultural thing or something like that, it is actually people themselves that uh, accrue such things to themselves, not uh, mainly cultural thing. you understand? Uh, I'm a Yoruba person, and uh, it's either you... Do it or you don't. It is not something that is compulsory. Mm. And nobody can fight you or hold you against that. That mm. is number one. Mm. And the second thing is that uh, when you look at it from the <clears throat> religion aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, I'm a Muslim and Islam actually doesn't allow something like that to happen. Mm. That you are spending, you eating, you know, it is like you celebrate. Mm. or going into full celebration regarding someone that is dead. Mm. Either that person is a loved one or is not a loved one, mm. you understand? Mm -hmm. And secondly, you don't know what the person is facing in the air after. Mm -hmm. So it is better for you to just sit down and be praying for such person, not that you should be spending or drinking alcohol or the guest sitting down and expecting so much exorbitant things to be spent. You know, not quite long, about last week, mm. one of uh, someone that is very close to me, mm. that we work together, came mm. to me mm. and told me that he needed to borrow some amount of, mo of money from me. Mm. And I told him that what he needed for, he said he wanted to bury his father. Okay. I said, that is absolutely wrong. I told him point blank, that is absolutely wrong. First of all, you are going into debt to bury your father for a kind of funeral. Secondly, this person that is dead doesn't know if you are going into any debt or not. And after the whole process, mm. you will start looking for money to pay for your debt. Mm. I am very sure that I am not the only person that you are going to borrow this money from. Right. I advised him mm. point blank. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if he took to my advice or not. Mm -hmm. So the point that I'm trying to make is that this whole thing doesn't really make sense at all. Mm. Because the person that is dead is dead. So let us just be a bit frugal with, our, uh, with the way and manner that we treat funeral. That is my contribution. Tayo, thank you very much for contributing. Tayo is lucky to come from a culture and religion that doesn't make ridiculous demands of people who are bereaved. Do you come from a culture or religion that um, says, oh yeah, you can uh, be as frugal as possible when somebody dies? Death is supposed to bring out the best in people it's supposed to bring out the best in our group orientation but people act very entitled during funerals when somebody dies a lot of entitlement comes out a lot of people take advantage of people who are bereaved and i don't know why this is but maybe i'm too oyibonized maybe you feel differently maybe you feel like these demands are necessary maybe you feel like this is our way and our way is the right way is our way the right way? Should we be making demands of people who have suffered a loss? Friday is on the line. Hello, Friday. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Sandra. Good evening. Welcome. Yeah, I'm Friday from Ibuleri. Good to have you on the show. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm from, from Edo State. Mm -hmm. In our whole culture, we don't have a... Our culture is not that strong. We are not forced to breathe on necessity. I remember I lost my dad 2017. Mm. I buried him according to my wishes, not family demanding for me. Mm. And in my place today, see, uh, Sandra, there are still many people, many families today, mm. when, they are, when they lost anyone, they are free to bury that person 
that same day, hmm. if they are not, they know that they are not comfortable enough to put, to take the cost to the mortuary. Hmm. You are allowed to do it according to your own, according to your pocket. Let me use it, use it that way. Hmm. You are not forced to do anything. Mm -hmm. It was, I remember those days, those days uh, 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 when we were still young. Hmm. You are forced to buy something like goods. You will buy go, uh, you will buy go, many things. Mm. But these days, those things are not happening in my place. Mm. You are free to do it. But there are still many people mm. because they say, ah, my friend, I know when my when my father, when the when when he say group died the other time. Mm. Look at how the children do it. Look at what, how they perform. Mm. They will go into debt that even they did not feed their father when the father was alive. Mm. Many many children they will be in, in the city. Why their parents are suffering in the village. Mm. But when the father die, they will carry their club here from Lagos. Mm. They will carry many things. They will be like to go and sh show up in the village that yes, I am who, who is who in the society. So you're but saying me, so you're saying that it's not your culture that puts pressure on the people during no, burials? No, 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 our own place is not it's not the culture that put pressure. People put pressure on themselves. By themselves. People, yeah, they put pressure by themselves on themselves. Hmm. I'm telling you this is what happened in my own place. Hmm. See, we are not we are not we, we don't force people to come and bury their loved ones. If you like if you want to bury the person that same day, mm. go and use a pack of coffee, any type of coffee. Mm. My sister, you are free to do it too. Mm. Nobody is forcing you. Like me now, I believe the best thing I can do for my parents is to take care of them while they are alive. I don't have much, but my mother is in Lagos here mm. for the past four years. I'm taking good care of her, me and my sister. Mm. When he died today, if we decided to bury her in Lagos, mm -hmm. nobody would force us. I lost my in-law, my elder sister husband, last year, last year, June. The man have his, he, he died at the age of 67. Mm -hmm. The same member will say, bring him home, bring him home. I said to take him home for what when he have his house here in Lagos. See, at the end of the day, we bury him in the next day after he's dead here in Lagos. That would be enough for The family are moving on today. See, uh, Sandra, mm. the people that are putting more pressure on, I don't know, for my own culture, mm -hmm. no culture is putting pressure on anybody. Friday, thank you very much for calling. We've got Christopher in Ikoi on the line. Hello, Christopher. President Sandra. Good to have you on the show. Good afternoon. Some Good afternoon. Are lucky. You know, my own, I'm from Delta. I'm from Ukwane. Okay. Um, Airport, to be precise. Okay. My wife died 2014 during the Ebola, right? Okay. You know, they are not allowed to move cars here and there. Okay. I called my people. They said, oh, you say young girl, don't need to bring her home, bury her there. Okay. I said, no, as a sign of respect, my wife must go home. Okay. The ambulance driver, I guess, said, ah, uncle, you know, no movement, but uh, you will pay. Okay. I say how much. Just please. I want this woman back home. He said, as far as you guys, okay. We tried. <laughs> we moved from Lagos. Nobody stopped us on the road. Okay. Until I get. Hello. Stop them. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Stop them. But my, we went smoothly. And we get home that Friday. Right. I was driving with my kids in another car. Right. While the boss I hired with people that went with me. The moment we get to our village, they stopped me. Oh, no, it's, uh, you don't supposed to drive. Come down, come down. Then one of my junior one take over the steering. So they move her straight to my in-law's house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm going with them. They say, no, you just go to your own house. You can't follow her to her place. Mm -hmm. They send me back, put me in a room that very Friday Sit me on the floor, mat. Mm. They mm. put mat. Mm. They prepare that room, clear everything that is there, fan, when clear everything, mm. just mat. Ask me to sit on the floor. Mm. But I was there that Friday. I didn't come outside. Saturday, when they want to go and bury my wife, they said, Look, for me to confirm that it's my wife they want to go and bury, right? Mm -hmm. They bring her and they open the casket. Have you seen it? I said, Yes. The one of them said, hey, what do you think? You want to put something in case if there's anything that happened to her? That I said, no, I leave everything to God. Then they took her to my, where I have a small something I'm doing. It's my children that show me the room, the part of the place they buried my, I didn't say it. I didn't go to the grave or whatever. Then 2 a.m., they wake me. They tell me 2 a.m., they wake me up. I will go for a certain waiting call. I will walk throughout the street. Nobody will come out. I'm in the middle, one my one of my uncle is in front, one is behind me. Then the one in front will be saying Onyebaga. Onyebaga. You understand now, Onyebaga, right? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Onyebaga, like uh, Onyagana. Onyagana, nobody should come out. Okay. <laughs> nobody should come out. 
Nobody could come out. They go, I did that shouting, go and come. Then I stayed there, they say for nine days, I would stay in the bush. They set fire somewhere in the bush. I tell them, say, no, I can't do this, I'm going back to work. I work with somebody. They say, okay, what we'll do, we'll give you six days. They give me six days. Then the last one, which I'm still here to do, Sandra, that thing is still disturbing me. They say I will cross the river, you know, like this Ikoi VI river, right? Mm, okay. For example, like Ikoi is my village, then v, uh, VI is the bush, the other side of it. Okay. They will cross me to VI with a chicken. They will go there and crepe my hair. But that one, they give me time. Say, anytime I can do it. Anytime I can come back and do it. Then I tell them, say, look, I'm a Christian. I'm doing all this because of the love I have for my wife. And when you don't do it, like all these guys say, we don't have culture, we don't. They are lucky. If you don't do it, like the women, when my auntie lost the husband, they sideline her, the women. You don't communicate with anybody. Nobody will enter your house. If they see anybody visit you, they will deal with that person. So for me, I, I don't think it's people that decided to do. No. No, I was lucky. They tried. They were soft on me because I explained things to them, please. But that one of crossing the river or something, mm. <laughs> I will say, when I get the chance, I will go. Although they give me any time, you can do that one. So that is the one left now. Do you think I, that? Do you think that the things that you did or had to do, uh, or that they made you do, do you think that they were reasonable, or do you think that they were unreasonable? I, I, for me, oh, I can't tell because that is how I meet it. If they were been doing all this, I'm mm. not the first person they would do this to. Mm. Yeah, so that is how I see it. All right, Christopher, thank you very much for calling. <laughs> Lillian in Ikorodu. Oh, Lillian, we do hope you call us back. Mokena Daniels on WhatsApp says, Painful topic, Sandra. When my grandma died in 1996, her wicked relatives demanded a lot of things and made my father waste a lot of money. On 14th of February this year, my mother passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. I took financial responsibility of her burial alone. I never allowed these relatives to stick their noses in the burial and I make and make the most useless demands. I only took some good advice from some of them and I spent far less money. McKenna Daniels, thank you so much for sharing your story with us and I'm terribly sorry uh, for the loss of your mother. Now, my other question also is, if you refuse to meet those demands, what will happen? I've got a message here. Sandra, my name is Shepherd. Um... This is one of those topics that we should consider. Thank you so much for talking about this. Um, Fred from Ikoyi says, During my mother's burial in Benue, we were asked to do certain things like kill cows with a certain knife and distribute it. But we refused as Christians. Next thing we heard, they were planning on using juju on us. These cultures need to be abolished. You can also talk about intertribal marriages some other day. Mm, Fred that one, eh? we'll, we'll use an entire year to discuss it. Uh, but I think it's actually even getting better because you have more and more people intermarrying these days. We've got uh, Justice O'Kara who says, I lost my mother-in-law April 2021. Oh, I'm sorry. She was young and it was a grief loss. When it was time to bury, demands of the villages were so much that we borrowed 700,000 naira just to please their rights, saying that if we don't pay the dues, we can't bury her in her husband's house. They all drank and ate to their fill. Youths, women and men collected their own dues. These are the greed of men who see opportunity in the grief of others. My goodness. Now, these are people like you and me. Oh. These ones are not government officials. Oh. These ones are me and you. Nah, nah people like me and you. So why is grief the time that we choose to do this? Why isn't grief the time that we choose to rally around the person that is grieving and try to offload some of their burdens? Why do we pick when they're grieving to do this? 99.3, hello. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling. My name is Adania. Welcome, Adania. Ah. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> the sky will not fall mm. if you don't do anything. Okay. But the truth is, my father died just six years ago. Mm. The demands were horrible. But for me personally, I was too numb to care. Okay. But when they buried my father, you would think that it was an offala going on. Okay. I didn't mind. For me personally, I wanted to give my father that he did so much. So I couldn't care what they wanted. Mm. But my elder brother 
one of his friends lost his younger brother. Okay. And he was too sad to listen to them. That day, he buried his brother, got water, sachets, bottled, and dropped. At the end of the burial, he just said, please, everybody, this is too sad for us to bear. We have water everywhere. Anybody who's thirsty, please go take water and drink and go home. Hmm. The sky didn't fall. Nothing hmm. happened. Hmm. People would just talk. They would just talk. And after some few days or a few months, yes, it will all die down. Hmm. Yeah, times they try to excommunicate you. But these days, how many people still go to the village? It's become a global village now. Hmm. People travel out. People hmm. are abroad. People are dying everywhere. Hmm. It's terrible in, the, in Ebo land, really. But there are some things that you find out that people dying outside the country. They are not brought home. Mm. Some people still bury them. Mm -hmm. They put, um, um, what do you call it, um, plantain stock or something mm. in the coffin to do normal burial and all that. But mm. the burial rites are exorbitant and they are too much. But when you die, when the loved one, if it's an old, old person, mm. yes, you will just ignore them if you can't afford it. But when it's a young person, my brother-in-law died. At a very tender age, left literature. Do you know the church had to make a space so much? And he's owing here, he's owing there. And nobody was there when he was ill to even check on him and say, how is he faring? Okay. And that's the sad part of it. They just wait for the person to die, then you see all of them. Well, Sandra, thank you. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you very much for calling. We've got uh, Doris in Ikotum. She's a first-time caller. Hi, Doris. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, thanks for all you do on Nigerian Info. Thank you. And uh, listening to the topic for today, I was quite touched because today happens to be my mom's third anniversary since oh. she passed on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, when she passed on, hmm. it was a, a, a big battle. I am from Delta State, okay. from Kuala precisely. Okay. And the people in system would bring her back home. She was with me in Lagos anyway before she passed on. Okay. So at the end of the day, we started making negotiations because she lived in the in the town in Kuala, mm -hmm. while her hometown is just a few uh, a few minutes drive away. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, they insisted that we bring her to the village, mm. <sighs> village that I don't even know anybody who've never visited there for a long time. Mm. Let me say I was there when I was just young. Mm. I don't know anybody there. She was the last in her lineage. Mm. Said no, I can't do that. I sent my younger brother. I said please go and discuss with these people. Mm. They went. First meeting, second meeting, and for every meeting you go, you go with bottles of drinks, hot drinks, beer, Kai. and everything. Kai. They said, okay, no problem. They will allow us, because she lived in the town. She was a teacher before she retired and died. Hmm. And she had a little building in the town there. I said, we're going to bury her there, because that's where we always come back to. We've always had good times with her in the town there. Hmm. So we said, we're going to bury her there. They insisted that we bring her home. So after all series of meetings, they now said, okay. What we're going to do, we're going to have that barrier in the town hmm. while we will still sponsor another barrier at home. At the end of the day, I was forced to accept. I said, okay, no problem. I'm going to do that. My uncle called me, one of my uncles from my father's side, and said, you see, Doris, you're making a big mistake. How much money do you have? Hmm. I'm talking about we have even borrowed money. Okay. My siblings and I have borrowed money to run the barrier because it was like going to be a big thing like People demand anyway. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, my uncle said, no, you can't do that meeting, that barrier mm. in two places. Mm. It's not done. Go back and tell them that whatever that is going to happen, you're going to do it in the town. And that is final. Eventually, we went there. They said, okay, we have to put buses on the road for them. Ah. I tell you, we put two coaster buses on the road. Why, almost the whole you know, th that's what there. blows my mind, Doris. The I'm fact that you, you are the one that has to provide bus. Shouldn't they I be providing prov bus? They were calling, even when they were, were still getting ready, making arrangements for vehicle, they were calling. What is happening? Is the boss not coming? Is the boss not coming? That Don't. was how we, we dropped it. We sent the vehicles. Mm. Almost the whole village, because they were even asking the bosses to come back a second time. I hmm. said, what do you mean? You want to bring the whole village to my place? Doris, I, I, wish, I wish I had more time, but I have to take a break. And I thank you so much for calling to share your story with me. If you can, call back so we can finish it. We'll take this break. We'll be right back, Lagos. Don't go away. Coming! <laughs> oh, Vincent! Just the person!
How demanding is it where you come from? What are some of the demands that are placed on people who have lost a loved one? Do you think that the demands where you come from are reasonable or do you think they're ridiculous? Women call me on 01465-7190. Men call me on 0700-993-993-993. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. We've got um, Emmanuel from Shum who says, Sandra, people in the city do not care if there's any burial levy in the village. So the villagers see burial time as opportunity. And that's my question. Why see burial time as opportunity? Think about it. Why see burial time as opportunity? These conversations we have on air, we're not just talking for talking sake. We're hoping to drive social change. So I hope that these conversations, you can start them with your elders in the village, your umunna, your umuada for Igbo people. I don't know what it is for Yoruba people or for Ijo people or for Ikweri people or for Tiv people or from people who are in southern Kaduna or people who are, you know, I don't know how it, it obtains. But I hope that this conversation trickles down to them. Are burials, a time of bereavement, really the time to take, to take advantage of the grieving? Think about it. Burials, is that the time to do it? A time when you should be chattering boss and helping people who want to make it to the burial. Is that the time to start asking the person who is grieving to provide buses for village people to attend the funeral? Seriously, think about it. I've got this comment on Facebook. Uh, Prince Will and Joko says, even the church Anglican took 100,000 from us that our dad was not paying his dues. Person way day Lagos, worshipping in another Anglican church in Lagos, still expected to pay dues back home. Insensitive people. They insisted otherwise they won't bury him. And then my question is, if for some reason you would refuse to meet the demands of the villagers or the church or the institutions, whatever they may be, whoever they may be, what's the worst that will happen? 
What's the worst that you have seen happen? If they come now, you won't bury your mama or your papa. They say, oh, you must drop this one for grave diggers. You must do this one for that. You must this, you must that. And you say, all of you go to hell. I'm not doing any of these things. I'm going to bury my mother. There's nothing you do about it. And then you go and bring um, uh, outside grave diggers. They dig the grave. You put your mother in the grave, cover it and go home. What will happen? Will they actually come and stop you? Will they fight you? Will they... Has it happened? Have you seen it happen that they fought you and they stopped you? Or, like, what has, what's the worst that has happened when you say, I will not bow to this pressure, I will not meet these demands? That's for those of you who think that the demands are ridiculous. So for those of you who think the demands are, are reasonable, call me and tell me what the demands that are reasonable are. Women, 01465-7190. Men, 0700-993-993-993. Hello. Sorry about that. 99.3. Sandra, good evening. Good evening. What's your name? My name is Chinyere. Chinyere. Yeah. Welcome. Go ahead. Thank you. You see, this um, black lady tradition or attitude is really, really good. It's so bad to the extent that if you, if you are a member of Catholic Church, it meets with the Orthodox Churches. A Catholic church, Anglican, or one, one of them, I don't know too many of them, but this old, old time church. Mm. You have paid all your dues in your church in Lagos or Kaduna or whatever. And you have, you are bereaved. When you go home, mm. they, they will tell you that you will still pay the one of the village. Mm. The worst part of it is that those of them, because I don't, I don't, I don't want to belong to such, mm. those of them, who belong to the village meetings here in Lagos. Mm -hmm. They contribute in Lagos. They contribute in the village. Mm. And they allow these things to go on. Mm. And uh, to answer the question that you asked, that if you don't do it, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't allow them, well, let me tell you, mm. I lost an uncle who was, you know, not in their meeting or whatever. Okay. They will not let you bury the person. They will tell you that the land does not belong to the individual. It belongs to the community. After so much struggles, and probably they have collected uh, maybe 20 or 30 percent of what they should have collected, they will tell you that because he doesn't belong to the meeting, he has not been paying, you will buy the land. The children bought the land. We are, they have sold their family land where they buried their father. They have to buy it. Sorry, let me understand something. My house, where I built house and mm. I come home every maybe Christmas, in that mm. compound that is my compound, I want to it's bury my father in that anything. compound. The village will make me pay for my land in my compound. I'm telling you, this incident that I'm telling you happened like almost 20 years ago. They bought that piece in the man's compound, that piece of gra 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 grave, or will I, will I say it's six, mm -hmm. six, uh, mm -hmm. six by mm -hmm. six mm -hmm. or what? Mm -hmm. They paid 5000 And they had to pay that because they're poor family. If it was a richer family, you, they will show you paper. This thing is so bad. I went to a burial about three years ago in Inmewi. Mm -hmm. And while I was in that there, the person who died was an Anglican, a family friend. And then a, 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 an Anglican reverend was, you know, talking with microphone after the, 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 the service, mm -hmm. you know. And he was talking and he asked the people, mm -hmm. and he was speaking in Igbo, that uh, 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 somebody who is in a meeting in Lagos mm -hmm. and has not fulfilled all the rights and everything of the of the land, mm. you know, is he is, is he is he from this place? Is he is is, is he is he supposed to be? They say no. The people call us that you cannot live uh, in Lagos or somewhere else and to say you have fulfilled that and your fatherland mm. you are ignoring it and and anything. You if you are belonging there, that this is the place you should belong first mm. because that's where you were born. And I'm like God, I hid my face in, in shame. Even though I'm not a member of but I hid my face in shame. I was, I'm a Christian. I said, God, what, why, what, 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 which chapter of the Bible are these people reading? And which, which verse, where are they coming from? Did their Bible turn upside down or what? My uncle died three years ago. He's an Anglican. Mm -hmm. he, he was instrumental to the Anglican church in Godogodo. Mm -hmm. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a just. Mm -hmm. And he was taken home before he was taken home. The, 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 the son went to meet the African priest in, in Asia. I would mention it. Nothing will happen. This nonsense has to stop. In Imo State. Hmm. And the, the, the Reverend Father there refused. The African 
terrible review, started counting this, this, that, that. And these are people that have lived in the north all the days of their life, over 50 years. And the son was so pissed off. He said, look, I'm not going to do all these things that you're saying. My dad laid down his life. He's a foundation member of the Anglican Church where we live hmm. and all that. Why are you giving me this, this type of hassle? Mm -hmm. If I bury my father in, in, uh, in Godogodo, nobody's going to say anything about it. Hmm. And the, the man put his foot down. And so what did the boy do? He went back to Godogodo mm -hmm. because his younger brother is a reverend. Okay. And he went to tell that one. That one said, don't worry about those people. Hmm that we know how to deal with. I'm a reverend father. Mm. In the same church, mm. we will see how it will happen. And he talked to his friends. And about five reverends came from Kaduna and Godogodo and just came together and went to the village. When, they, when the other man realized, the one in the village realized that ah, some reverend fathers have come, and he sent to my uh, uh, cousin that he should come and uh, he should come let them talk. This other one said, I'm not going. I'm not going. Mm. And that was how... He, he, he bypassed them, and the prayer was done. So what I'm hearing is that a lot of this comes yes. down to the individual. As individuals, yes. you need to put your foot down and say, okay, do your worst. So the, the, the reverend said, you are a reverend, I'm a reverend. I want to see how you can stop this thing, and I want you to give me from where you are reading from. Chinyere, thank you very much for calling and sharing your story with me. Nenna says on WhatsApp, thank you, Sandra, for bringing this topic. In our case, what I see is that they celebrate death irrespective of the age. Where I'm from, some people now make a business out of it. And the painful thing is that they do not care how painful the death is. The list is endless what these people demand. And if you refuse to grant their demand, they threaten to leave the dead for you. And I bet you no one will dare touch the dead. It's a long story, Sandra. Nena, thank you very much for your message. And my question still remains. Okay, they leave the dead for you. And then, Guinea What happens next? So they say, oh, the village will not carry. Small money, you put it together. That money that they will tax you, that you should pay for this levy and that. Put it and pay undertakers. They will carry the, the body for you. Undertakers can even dig the grave. They can even put the body down into the grave and cover it. That's what happened during my own father's burial because the grave diggers were moving mad. So if you say, eh, eh, what's the worst that happens? I wonder if Vincent is still on the line. He's a first time caller. Hello, Vincent. No, he's not there anymore. Thank you very much for calling, though. Someone says in his village, a man died and his relatives wanted to uh, wanted him to be buried in his hometown. But the children decided to bury him in their house. Next day after the burial, the man's son could not be found till today. Even when the man was exhumed and taken to his village, still the boy is nowhere to be found. Anonymous is sharing that story. Anonymous, thank you for your story. But how do we know that it's because the man was buried in, his, in their house that led to the loss of the son? Should be in this Nigeria that people are going missing up and down. How do we not know it's simply a coincidence? Because from what I'm hearing, there's a lot of pressure that we allow culture and people who otherwise should have no say in our lives determine how we run our lives. So what's the worst that happens if you say, this is ridiculous, I'm the one who's, who's grieving, you should be rallying around me right now. If you're not going to step up and stand with me, step off. Step all the way off. What's the worst that will happen? Anonymous thinks you'll go missing. Alex in Ikeja, hello. Yeah, hi Sandra. Thanks for calling. And um, Sandra, most of these things is just silly indulgence. Okay. That we call culture, especially when it comes to things like burials and stuff like that. Okay. Suppose this person died at sea, you know, where the body could not be reached, like a plane crash and all those things. Mm. You understand? Mm. They will now start listing some silly things for people to bring. And, you know, as far as our, our, our system, our system of governance is concerned, mm. these are the kind of things that local governments should be legislating on. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. The local government, as in the established government of the day, mm -hmm. right, should be legislating on things that affect people's lives directly. I've listened to people who call. For, in my own area, there's no, there's no big deal. It's what you want to do, you do. Mm. And for my those states, there's no, there's no, just do it how you want to do it. Mm. Most times, it's family that sit down and say, this is how it's, how it's, it's not a matter of culture. There's nothing like culture, this, this, this. Mm. That one is a long story. Mm. The issue is these are the kind of things that 
our local for the other day you did a program where we were trying to sort out what local government does. Mm-hmm. Some people say they have they they are obsolete. They are they're not mm-hmm. obsolete. Mm-hmm. They are the closest to the people. I've listened to everybody who called mm-hmm. and it's one kind of story of war or the other. Mm-hmm. It's what your local government should do. It's just as simple as that. Hmm. All right, Alex, thank you very much. Is this something that the local government needs to step into? We've got a message here uh, that says they are ridiculous, but we are comfortable with them because we are the same politicians, civil servants or whatever, who use privileged authority to defraud the environment. The USA concluded that almost everyone in Nigeria is both a victim and a perpetrator of crime. Hmm. Altine is on the line. She's in Ikeja. Hello, Altine. Welcome. Hello, Sandra. How are you? Good to have you on the show. Yeah, good to be here. Honestly, it's a very good topic. But um, incidentally, I am, I find a lot of culture, particularly in the South here, concerning burial and other things, very, very unfair. Mm-hmm. Because I am from Southern Kaduna, mm-hmm. and we don't have such a... I'm glad I listened to somebody who calls Godogudu. That's my place. Okay. You know, that's my area. We don't have such. When my father died in 2010, because being the first child, my uncles were just telling me that I was wasting time. They wanted to bury their brother. Because they were waiting for me coming from Lagos, they mm. now gave me some time. Mm. And and they, all they could do was, we are giving you, if you don't come after one week, we are burying our brother. Ah. By the time I got home, mm-hmm. Yeah, everything was arranged. I was the one that because we have lived in the city and we wanted to do this, mm. I bought my mother the clothes to wear and I bought my younger ones. Everything was ready. I didn't, we didn't have to go any extra mile. Mm. The church was ready. We, we, are, we are equals in the village. Okay. And because my father also was a politician, the, politi- uh, the politicians came and they said, ah, he was the chairman, blah, mm-hmm. blah, they want to bury him mm-hmm. uh, in the city. I said, no, 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 we don't bury him in the city. Even though it's a local government, we want to take my father to the village. We insisted. Mm-hmm. But they were like, please, can you just allow us to bury our chairman in the, uh, here in the local government in the city, which is a bit, uh, I mean. But we didn't have to do anything. No church asked us. But I've lived in Lagos for over 20 years. Every time I see them burying people, mm. and I'm like, they will ask you for this, they will ask you for that. My younger brother died two, five years ago. I'm oh, sorry. My people came all the way to Kaduna because he died in Kaduna. And we didn't, because he's a young boy, we mm. didn't feel we should take him to the village. Mm. They chattered a bus themselves. We don't know how they got here. Mm-hmm. All we provided was like snacks or no, we, we made food. Mm. For them to eat, everybody, everybody that wanted to come came on his own. We did, did nobody tax us for anything. Mm. I find it very, very unfair for somebody who is grieving mm-hmm. and you start taxing him. And at times I hear them is here. You have to buy set of chairs mm-hmm. or kinikon kinikon mm-hmm. for the church. In some places, and you have to make tea every morning for the women. Eh? You have no, to buy when, bread when and make are, hot tea every morning for the women. Let me tell you what happens when you are bereaved in my place. When my father died. We don't cook. We that are believe don't cook. Neighbors, friends, family start cooking and bringing food. They take turns in bringing food for people that will sit down to mourn with you. Hmm. It's very funny here. I, I don't understand how they do, do this. So Somebody do, is believe that they are still asking him. Do you think maybe the traditional rulers here need to step in? I think so. But the traditional rulers are part of it, Sandra. <laughs> because they demand, they, I think they, they get out of it, they get some cut out of it. Hmm. Okay. Altine, thank you very much for calling. We've got Agoma on the line. Mm-hmm. He's in Bagata. Agoma, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Sandra, for thank you for calling. This chance, yeah. hmm. um, actually, that is why all these things are called culture. Some people say we have forgotten our culture, hmm. we are uh, taking over Western culture over hmm. us, and now we are complaining about our culture. Yes, right. What I do not like is when it gets to excess. Mm. Now, all these things are part of the respect you pay to the, bur- the, to the dead. And, um, and that is the pride of most parents, for, uh, that is those who will bury them, how will I be buried, that kind of thing. Our parents do think about this when they are alive. So if you're a son or daughter and you are complaining of all these things, uh, you are not uh, actually giving the last respect to your loved ones or to your parents. Having said that, um, some of these communal uh, demands also as a result of uh, uh, when 
you are, or when the dead or even the living were not responsive to their communion calls and uh, um, you know involvement uh, in the development of the community. If you know in Igbo land, we wherever you are, you are expected to be committed to the development of your uh, area, towns, villages, and so on. And then there are dues you pay as a result of that. And somebody lives in a community or uh, uh, in a, um, uh, uh, lives outside, and then he doesn't do this for 20 years or 50 years, and he dies, he expects that he should not go back the village that is no longer the road that has been graded, some of the uh, facilities that have been built in this uh, village, and he and his family enjoys it without uh, contributing towards that. It's unfair also to the community, especially this new, uh, this uh, community and culture whereby developmental uh, things are done by the people rather than the government. So what do you, uh, uh, why are we complaining? So, but when it is excess, I think that is where we need to talk about it. When is it excess? Uh, it's excess, for instance, when you have to say uh, you, you, uh, I mean, when the amount is, is, is so much. For instance, if you have an aged parent, you, you, and they are sick or whatever, you feel that they are coming closer to their graves, you, you, you make plans, you, just like every other thing you do, there, there are plans for it. There are insurances for it. You can uh, enter into insurance for such things. And if you don't do that and expect that the, the community will not demand such things, I don't think it's also unfair because that is how, that is why it's a culture. And that is why it's our own culture. But culture, yeah. but culture, it's the people make the culture. The yeah, culture, the culture doesn't make the people. The people oh, make right. the that's culture. Right. That, that, that's right. Now that's, you you look yeah. at a culture that centers the comfort of the guests who are attending a funeral over the comfort of the people who have been bereaved, and you, I mean, you look at that, and and that tells you that that's good culture. Uh, that's that, my first uh, question, Agoma. Then my second question is this. Yeah. When we talk about befitting burials for yeah. parents, yeah. why is it that befitting is only uh, looked upon by how expensive or extravagant um, the, 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 the funeral is? Why can't befitting simply be that I did not wrap you in leaves and throw you in the ground? Why can't befitting be that I put you in a casket and put you in the ground and prayed over the grave? That's right. Befitting is relative. What may be befitting to, to a rich man uh, may not be to another. But in all, if you spend 200000 I spend $1 million. To us, depending on how much you have, both are befitting. If you spend 50000 to you, those are befitting. But if my budget is 50000 and yeah. village people start making their demands because I was not paying dues in the village, even though I now live in the city, my entire life is now in the city. Okay. And, yes. and, yeah. and those dues take my 50000 naira budget to 300000 naira, which means yeah. I now have to go and borrow to 50000 naira. Why were you not committed to, to the development of your village while you were in the city? Urbanization. People have migrated from rural areas to urban areas. Then you, you bury in the urban city. Nobody, nobody, nobody get a hitch. You, no, but no, no. Actually, some, yeah. cultures, some cultures make a big fuss. I mean, you heard the caller who called in and told yeah. us that they made a huge fuss about her wanting to bury her father uh, in the city. No, 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 no. I, I, I think uh, it's, it's, it's individual. Some people even no. say don't no, 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 bury it's, abroad. It's not, it's not they say bring generally. back. The body no, no, from no. abroad. No, 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 no. No culture, as far as Igbo land is concerned, no culture insists. I have overseas, we have seen, we have buried overseas. We have uh, friends, I have, you know, been involved. Perhaps uh, not people... in Igbo culture, but somebody called into the show uh, yeah. earlier in the show, before the break. Yeah. I think it was yeah. Doris. And she was yeah. telling us how they were telling her she can't do a burial in the city. And there is always that persuasion, for instance, from your loved ones. For uh, so don't, well, no, 
Let's not bury. What about if the children grow up? Where is the burial ground of their father? You know, something. Is the like person that. in the so ground? The person you. is dead. What is in no, the no, ground I, is I'm meat. Just, yeah, yeah, of course. That is. Uh, it, it, there is. Uh, I can't just uh, forget about the the tomb of my loved ones mm. or, 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 or my father. Mm. It, it has to be, even if it's in the cemetery. That mm. is why the cemetery is there. Mm. If it is in the cemetery, they say, Tom, my name, the name of uh, the, the loved ones are written. Is the, is, is the loved one is the, is the loved one in the grave or is the loved one in your heart? It, 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 uh, it, it's, it's in both places. And then there is, in the heart, there, there is nobody who goes to the heart to see them. Uh, but but at, at the same time, the people, the community. That's why we belong to society. Agoma. And that is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish we had more time because I loved talking to you, but we don't, unfortunately. Now, Christopher has been waiting for five minutes. I doubt he's still there. Uh, he's not there anymore. But Christopher, thank you very much for calling. This is definitely a conversation that we will come back to because um, it's something that everybody will have to do. Everybody will have to bury somebody. And if you come from a place where some of the demands are ridiculous, then, um, you know, what do you go do? You know, whenever this uh, uh, conversation comes up, I think about as it goes to school. Do you remember that book? Most of us read that book in secondary school. But I think that most of us have forgotten what that story was about. Eze's father was a moderately rich man who wanted more than anything for his son to get an education. But then he died. And his brothers insisted that all his money should be used to give him a befitting burial. And after that, there was no more money for Eze's school. And whenever this topic of burials come up, I think about Eze's dad sitting among the ancestors. I think about what he was thinking, watching his son struggling to get an education, watching his son working as a cook. And I wonder, was Eze's father thinking, well, he gave me a befitting burial. When our ancestors see that we borrowed money to give them a quote-unquote befitting burial to meet all these demands placed on us by elders and relatives in the village. Do they look at us and say, hmm, you gave me befitting burial? I have a final message from Andrew in Lecky who says, we are a poor country. The idea that our culture demands we spend so much money burying the dead is madness. I'll leave it at that message and bring you some money cutsy credit bill. Are you a salary earner and experiencing salary delays? In need of school fees, loan, or house rent? Does your business need expansion and you've got no money? Do you need a car or equipment for personal or business use? Worry no more. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.